The summer 2018 anime season is upon us, and unfortunately we can't watch everything, although perhaps that is fortunate. So what are we going to watch? Well, here are the five anime series from this season that I plan to keep watching. Starting with Angle Moi, Record of Mongol Invasion. The title kind of gives you a clue as to what it's about. The Mongols are invading Japan in the 1600s, and a motley crew of Japanese people are trying to fight them off on the island of Tsushima. I love the art style in this, um, and I, I, I like the characters. I am also very impressed with the pacing. This is a show where they could have spent a lot of time setting things up and establishing stuff, but we kind of jump right into the action and what's going on, uh, while still introducing characters at a good clip. There's a wide cast, wide range of characters in here, a lot of people to keep track of, and they do a really good job of balancing that, of kind of introducing characters but not spending a lot of time on the minor characters who aren't important just yet. Um, and I'm just intrigued. I, I love how historically accurate it appears to be, that it's not just, you know, feudal Japan with a few changes. This feels very, you know, um, very much like a particular period in Japanese history. And um, I also really appreciate that I understand how the strategies are important and useful. This is ultimately a show about, you know, a group of characters fighting off a superior force and how they do that. And they make it very clear what they're doing, why they're doing it, and why those tactics are smart or are not smart. So really intrigued by this, and of course, that, that, those, that visual style, a dark, uh, sort of muted palette, uh, I'm really digging. Then there's Cells at Work. Yeah, I'm loving it too. It's cute. It's light. Let's be honest. This is a snack. It is not meant to be filling. It's not meant to be deeper complex. But it is a fun thing to watch, and it's also educational. Uh, and I think that's one of the keys to understanding it. If it were particularly complex or deep, the educational aspect would suffer. Because you're trying to learn all these things, it is a show set inside a human body where your, the cells are human, you know, uh, anthropomorphized. And as a result, there's only so much plot you can throw in there without overwhelming the mind as it's trying to understand, you know, what a ventricle is and how cells, you know, move things around and all that kind of stuff. So I really like the the amount of depth in it. Um, I think it's adorable um, and not in a, not in an unnecessarily cutesy way. It is upbeat, but, you know, it, it's, it knows how to occasionally throw in a pump your fist in the air, cheer moment. Um, it knows how to throw characters in in danger and not make it serious danger, but add up a little, add a little tension. There's tension in the show now and again, and so, like I said, it's a snack that you watch to enjoy yourself, to relax a bit and learn something. And I think it does a great job of that. I'm a big fan of Sherlock Holmes. Read the stories when I was a kid. Um, I was a Jeremy Brett fan growing up, and. Um, so I, I like Sherlock Holmes. Turns out Holmes of Kyoto is not really a, a Sherlock Holmes story. It is um, referencing Sherlock Holmes more than anything else in the main character. It's basically a modern detective story, a modern mystery show. What's interesting about it is uh, a couple of things. One, I really like how the main character, Holmes, is not a sociopath. He's not a particularly strange human being. Uh, he just has this deductive ability, and he uses that to help people and, and solve mysteries. I also like that it's not serious crimes, it's not murders. Um, it is, you know, misplaced items, or trying to identify things, or, um, or people getting threatening letters. Um, I like the sort of more light tone of that. It's also fascinating seeing a show set in modern-day Kyoto, which, is, which was the imperial capital for centuries, um, it is a more traditional city, so that you, know, you see a lot more kimonos on the street, if you will. And it's just a very different side of Japanese culture that we don't typically see. Um, I also really appreciate that the relationship between the two main characters, it's obviously a more shoujo series, but there's no romantic tension between the characters. Um, you know, the girl obviously um, admires the boy, um, but she's not thinking of dating him at all, and he's not thinking of dating her at all. 
Um, I suspect they're going to go there at some point, but they're not shoving that in our face early on, which makes sense. They are co-workers. They're going to keep that professional distance for uh, as long as possible. So really, um, I think this is one of those shows that's a little unusual and that combines its elements into a mixture that works surprisingly well. It is a mystery show that is um, surprisingly light and upbeat, though there are some, definitely some serious moments. This might surprise you. I suspect a lot of people were turned off by Planet With, but I'm a big fan of the creators. Uh, the, the, the creator of this has done several manga that I'm a huge fan of. So I know that he tends to tell stories with... Um, surprising twists on shonen formulas, which is definitely what Planet With feels like. Now, you may not be into that, but I know this is going somewhere. I was kind of weirded out by that first episode, but I am sure that it all pays off in the end. So I'm going to stay with it, see where it goes, and uh, yeah, I suspect this is going to be one of the you know surprisingly worthy shows of the season. We'll see. Finally, Sirius the Jaeger. This definitely has the highest animation budget, action animation budget, that is, of any anime show this season so far. Uh, this is the Cowboy Bebop, Wolf's Reign, you know, high animation budget series of the season. This is really interesting. It's at an unusual period in Japanese history, 1915, Japan. It's got a supernatural aspect awesome action animation, um, a wide, or a, a, a large cast of characters that are still very easy to differentiate, and I'm just really intrigued. This is taking all my boxes. It is, it looks, it's fun. It is fundamentally fun, um, while also having a, um, a lot of attention paid to color and darkness. Um, this is definitely an anime aimed at an older audience, Really appreciate that, and uh, I'm just really, really, yeah, this is like a show made for me, so looking forward to that. I think it's, um, it, this is probably one of those shows that will not hold together as well plot-wise, it's a common thing with, with uh, sort of animation-focused shows like this, but I'm okay with that. I can just watch a show, I love animation as animation, I will just watch that, that's fine, uh, and We'll see where it goes. I can I can totally live with that. So those are my five favorite anime this season. Obviously, there are more that I am interested in checking out, but aren't quite at that level of definite. You know, uh, Review Starlight is a show I like to watch more of, but five is plenty for me right now. So if you have others that you're interested in, that's fine. You know, we all have different tastes. Obviously, my tastes are correct, and but whatever. Uh, and I, hopefully this will have at least shown you some shows that maybe you weren't as interested in, but maybe will spark some interest in you. Uh, and either way, I hope you find something really fun and something that feeds you this summer 2018 anime season.